Well, scientists warn that extreme weather events, wildfires, floods and storms are expected to worsen as a result of climate change. Those types of natural disasters threaten cities across the U.S. and could take a toll on their economic prosperity. Recently, insurance industry giants Allstate and State Farm announced they will no longer issue new policies in California, saying that increasing wildfire risks make the nation's most populous state too expensive to cover. Joining me now is David Calloway, Calloway Climate Insights founder and editor-in-chief. Thank you for joining me this morning. So I first want to start with this, this uninsurable um, trend that we're seeing in places like California here. What does that signal as if you're a homeowner or you're a business and you're trying to decide where you'd like your business to be when you see some of these things now becoming uninsurable? Well, good morning, Rochelle. And it certainly makes the markets tougher. This, this is a trend. Um, last week was a big week and really a watershed moment in climate finance because it's the time when kind of obscure concerns about what climate change might do in the future to us come right home and hit everyone who owns a home or is thinking about owning a home. Uh, State Farm is the largest insurer in California, all state number four, I believe. Uh, and for them to pull out of new home loans really creates a, a, a difficult time in the market. Uh, state law doesn't require you to have insurance on your homes, but um, but most mortgage covenants do. So uh, home, uh, people are going to be scrambling to get insurance. This is climate change coming down to the personal level to affect you and affect me. Uh, and it's going to, you know, be it'll make it harder. There are backups in California. The, California has a what they call a fair plan for insurance of last resort, which is administered by the state. It's about four times as, as expensive uh, as your regular insurance plan. So this is, it, you can't overstate how important those two announcements were. Um, they've been moving towards it for a while. Those people, neighbors of ours who live in the mountains and stuff, were finding their homes were uninsurable. Uh, but now to say across the whole state, that's big. Uh, we're seeing it in Florida. We're seeing it in Louisiana. Uh, all coastal states may see it with rising seas in an, even New York City uh, at some point. And so um, the crunch is beginning in the, in the finance from climate change. And you mentioned the, the three states where we tend to see this. I mean, California, Florida, Louisiana, which are, are usually the states that you think of when you think of the, the biggest exposures to climate risk, whether it's wildfires, hurricanes or flooding. But in terms of where you're also seeing the biggest drops in home values in these coastal cities from these climate effects, what are the standouts? Well, absolutely. I mean, some places like in the Florida Keys and in various parts of the Bay Area here that are right on the beach, um, Homeowners have been told essentially by their towns and their and their counties, look, we're not going to be able to support you by building seawalls and, you know, building out stilts for your homes and stuff. Essentially, you're going to have to move at some point. Uh, and so that, you know, the great climate migration we've been fearing for a long time is something uh, we're going to start to see here. So that affects homes as well. You know, it's crazy, though, Rochelle. People are still coming out here. They're still looking for homes on the beach. Uh, Phoenix, which has a severe water shortage and heat above 100 degrees, uh, you know, 100 days is a summer. Um, it's still seeing record numbers of inflows from retirees and people looking for sun. Um, so you know, I'm not sure anyone's getting the message, but these types of things with insurance companies and mortgages and homeowners, this starts to spread the message. Next step, obviously, is that it's going to have an impact, an economic impact on the cities and counties and states. That's going to affect their municipal bonds. That's going to affect their, their borrowing. Um, that's going to hit home in all the markets and ripple through the bond markets right into the stock market. So then when people are trying to look for more climate resilient cities, obviously those are going to start looking a lot more attractive. Where are you seeing some of this climate migration starting to go? Well, you know, that's a great question, Michelle. Years ago, I was the editor of USA Today, and I asked the staff, pretty much the whole staff, I said, I want to do a story or a series of stories on where on what climate change looks like in every part of the country. And I want us to find out where the safest part of the country is. A hurricane, Florida has its hurricanes, California, wildfires and earthquakes, uh, you know, freezing cold in the north, uh, devastating heat in the, in the South, you know, where's the safest place? Tornadoes in the Tornado Alley. And, and they determined, uh, this was about 10 years ago, that it was Salt Lake City, Utah, 
no problems uh, with earthquakes, hurricanes, wildfires, and tornadoes. What we didn't realize a decade ago was that the Great Salt Lake is drying up and may not even exist in four or five years. Um, so even Salt Lake gets hit. A lot of people now are talking, you see, uh, uh, it's fashionable to talk about Duluth, Minnesota. Um, with all apologies to my relatives in Minnesota and Wisconsin, you know, Duluth is no person's place of somewhere you want to live. It's very cold in the winter. But they're saying it's going to be a perfect paradise uh, in 20 years with climate change because the winters will be warmer, the summers will be cooler, and there'll be no, uh, and there'll be no uh, uh, devastating wildfires or hurricanes. So I think you're going to see more stories like this, trying to find the Duluths of the world, not just in the U.S., but everywhere. As you start to see a migration, we're not seeing it yet because people, the economy is still fairly good historically and, uh, and, and climate change hasn't had that much of an impact yet. But when we start to see these insurance moves, this means the financial markets are paying attention to it and it's beginning. Now, of course, when we think of environmental investing, you think of e ESG investing as well. But when you think of a state like Florida, when you have Governor DeSantis, who could potentially end up being, you know, being president of the United States, what do you think the future holds then for ESG investing and what that perhaps turning point will be for it to be taken more seriously? Well, DeSantis's move against ESG is really a, a head shaker. I mean, obviously, it's a political move. He's taking advantage of the kind of woke, anti-woke uh, uh, culture wars that we're seeing playing out across the country to put ESG in there because Florida is on the, one of the front lines of climate change. Um, DeSantis's record actually on environmental stuff is not that bad. He's done a lot to protect Florida's resiliency. But when it comes to kind of talking about ESG and national attempts uh, by essentially state pension funds like the Florida Pension Fund or Texas Pension Fund, to hedge against the risk of climate change on their properties and on their investments in their states or their retirees. Um, attacking that is really just shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, of course, the danger is if this goes national, uh, it could become a national crisis. I mean, the GOP is already suing in federal court to overturn a Biden law, which was in, brought in to essentially offset a Trump law that, uh, um, that said you can't re regard environmental uh, risks when investing. Um, so the GOP is going after this on a federal level already. Um, DeSantis is going to use it as a club in his election campaign. And Trump really, you know, kind of laughed off climate change. He joked about it. DeSantis is really putting himself in the position of climate denier in chief, and he's going to make it an issue in his campaign. Whether it actually, you know, uh, a resol you know, resolutes with anybody, I don't know. But uh, but it's certainly affecting how Wall Street thinks about ESG investing right now. Certainly worth keeping in mind. Lots of great insights there. Do appreciate you joining me this morning, David Calloway, Calloway Climate Insights founder and editor in chief. Thank you so much.